Greetings. Welcome to the Kingdom Cultural Center. I would like for you to turn to now. Uh, 2 Peter, 3rd chapter. And we're going to talk on the subject, slack concerning his coming. Now, so many of us, we wonder, you know, back in the time, we do what we want to do. And I'm convinced that many of us today, we have failed to uh, really embrace God's word um, due to the fact that he's taken so long. And it's just like it was. Um, one, one, one scripture in the God's Constitution says, you know, hey, um, God is not concerned about, he's not slack concerning his coming. Now let's turn to Second uh, Peter, uh, the third chapter, and I would like you to read, um, start with the first verse. And I want to, I want you to follow me here. Beloved, I, beloved. I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up in you your pure minds by way of reminder. In other words, Peter was saying he was reminding them. Um, I want you to understand something now. We have to constantly go over the word to remind. Uh, Dr. Monroe used to say, um, after you say it seven times, it gets, to, it gets in your memory. And um, to a degree, he was, he was right. I, I, I say it more than, uh, I, I go to the scripture more than uh, uh, one or, once or twice. And uh, because the spirit has to get into you. It gets into you to the point that you become the living word as you're walking. And you live by that. And you're guided by that. Listen, I go on. That you may be mindful of the words of which were spoken before the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? I made this statement on several occasions, and I want to say this to give you a good illustration. We live in time. Let's say this is one and this is a hundred. In between that, we live. We live in that space of time. Some may live to be 50, some may live to be 75, some may live to be 26. But in that time span that God has given us, we should be able to find our purpose. And the only way we're going to do that is seek Him first. That's what it's all about. One to a hundred. Now, God, he doesn't live in time. He lives in eternity. So the borders between one and a hundred are dropped. No more borders. So when God says he's going to bless you or he's going to do this, I'll give you an example. When God told Abraham in Genesis, the first chapter, uh, about he was, your ancestors going to be like the seed, sand of the sea. It was over 400 years before that to actually begin to take place. So God doesn't live in time. We live in time. And when you seek him, you will, dis you will discover your purpose. You'll know your purpose in life, you see. Now, keep in mind, Back to the thing about faith. Abraham's faith started when the very time that God said, I want you to pack up and leave everything. He was packing up and everything, get ready to go, leaving. And he didn't question him. He believed God's word. God said, hey, get ready to go. He went into a land that he... Going to a land he didn't have, an, he didn't have a clue, but he trusted God's word. We're living in an age now. We're living in a time that we have to trust in God's word, embrace the kingdom, 
What is the kingdom? The kingdom is God living in you. When you have the Holy Spirit that in your mortal body, you are a kingdom citizen. Now, many of you may not. You go to church, you don't have the Holy Spirit, you do what you want to do, you still, you know, and, and what I'm fixing to say now, it's not your know, hinges on your salvation, but you may smoke, drink, <laughs> and a lot of stuff do hinges on how far you want to get, and you do what you want to do, you commit adultery, you commit a fornication, uh, which is an ancient word, but it, 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 it's having sex without being married. Uh, some of you may think, well, I can do this and I can do that. No, that's all concerning religious osity. Those That goes against God's principles. Are you feeling me here? Many religions have God's principles but they're not kingdom citizens. I'm, re I'm going to repeat that. Many organizations and, and, and religious organizations have used God's principles, but they're not kingdom citizens. Let me define this to you again. To be a kingdom citizen, you have to have the Holy Spirit indwelling in your mortal body. It's not a matter of going to church every Sunday or Wednesday or whenever you may go and you say you're a kingdom citizen. No, you're a religious member of a denomination. I'm going to say this to you also. But if you're a kingdom citizen, and you embrace that, or better yet, let me say this to you. I grew up in a religious environment, and I, I always thought that that's what, what it's supposed to be. And, and living in New York, um, I grew up in a religious, and, and that's what I was taught. But there was one scripture that always stayed with me, and it was a Matthew, the sixth chapter, and the uh, 33rd verse. And it, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, if you read the 25th verse of that, it tells you why. And it comes to that point. You don't worry about your food, your clothing, none of that. But you seek first the kingdom and all these things. But in this world, many of us are, are trying to sculpture out a, a, sculpt out a, 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 a job, a business, uh, to get rich financially. No. Put him first, and he'll put you first. This is my responsibility to tell you that. When you seek God and seek the kingdom, he will show you. Let's start from the 25th verse. Of Matthew's, and he will tell you. And then go to the 30th to 34th verse. Read it over again and again until it gets into your spirit. Until you get to that point, you have faith in that. You walk in that. And I guarantee you, when you get that into your spirit, okay, here's what I'm going to do I'm going to read to you Matthew. Turn to Matthew, the sixth chapter, so you can get a really good uh, a, a grip on it. Matthew, the sixth chapter, excuse me, I'm going to just put a marker here in the Word. Matthew, the sixth chapter, in the 25th verse, and I want you to read something, and I want you to get the big picture here, because there's going to be times coming in this world that you're going to hear all these things of troubling times. But the word of God said, this is just the beginning of sorrow. So don't let these things sweat you. Listen, Matthew 6 and 25, and we read, and follow me as I read. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. What you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into bonds. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Which of you, by worrying, 
can add one cubit to your statue. I always say, my, my saying is this, why worry about something? If you claim to believe in the Lord, if you claim to believe in faith, I didn't say have faith. If you claim to have faith in God's word, because many, many of you say well, my faith. Well, what is your faith in? What, do you, what is your faith? What is the foundation of your faith? Is it solid? Your Christian faith. I, 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 look, 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 look. First of all, your Christian faith, what is it based upon? I see a lot of people in this time age voting for this one and voting for that one. And you're looking to these people that God created man. They're created beings. And they can't do anything for you. They're full of ideologies of themselves, of the, or what they want, what they want to accomplish. But if you trust in God's word, have faith in his word, he will not let you down. I assure you, he won't let you down. Before I go into the next session, I want to read something to you. Let's go back. Remember now, your faith in God's word is your greatest asset. Here's Peter says, he writes, But beloved, do not forget, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord is one day, is one day as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. In other words, when God tell you something, he has no time in that. He has a certain time. Look, I have to go now, and my son let me know that I have to wind this up. But remember, once again, your greatest asset is your faith in God's word. Until next time. Thank you.